Good morning everybody. Today we are going to start our computer class of class 9. I am Chandan Senyal here with you to teach the computer for class 9. This is our first class where we are going to discuss about the first chapter. The chapter introduction to object oriented programming concept before we get into the object oriented programming concept let us discuss about the different type of softwares available and what are these softwares and how these softwares been written first of all these softwares are the collection of programs and these programs are nothing but a set of commands given to the computer to work a specific work out a specific problem now when we give these commands they require a language and that is called computer language now these computer languages are divided into two parts one is called low level language another is called high level language now these languages are made of grammars and the grammar of the language we call them syntax now computer language low level computer language mainly they are made of binary codes or binary digits they are very simple for the machine to understand but it's very hard for the common people to write a program in the binary language the binary language was very hard but that is the initial years we have used the machine code after that little bit better of that being developed and they use mnemonics and this mnemonics are being used in a language called assembly language it is also a part of the low level language so there are two types of low level language I have discussed one is machine level language or machine language second one is the assembly level language then we come to the high level language this high level language are written using the commands mostly English like keywords those commands are like English like keywords and they need somebody to translate them and this translator is known as compiler or interpreter what they does they convert this source code or program code into the object code and that object code is also known as executable code if you look at the evolution of the computer languages then you will find it is evaluated in a different generation first one is first generation second generation third generation fourth generation and fifth generation the first generation we have discussed they are machine level language they are just the first language we developed they are using the zero and one code then come to the mnemonics I talked about the mnemonics and these mnemonics are used in a language that language is known as assembly language and that assembly language also required a translator though those translator is a machine code like translator and they are called assembler after that we developed the third generation language this is known as high level language but this language also having a, a kind of a um, transmission from the low level language to high level language it is not fully formed and that is the time some of the codes were very low level type like that is the time we developed a language called B language and slowly that B level language has been modified and we know it in modern day C level language apart from that COBOL apart from that basic and other language were developed during this particular time then come to the 
then come the fourth generation language which is much more closer to the natural language english and it is uh, much more easier than the third generation language where the programmings are written using the english like keywords it reduces the programming effect time requirement and most important thing is that the cost of development because in the third generation language you need highly qualified people to develop a software whereas in the third fourth generation language you don't require that kind of people for developing the computer software that is the time it become very popular when we start using fourth generation language in 1980s and the modern most modern generation is fifth generation language where you don't require a much of the coding coding is mainly done with the help of the computer itself and these language is a so easy that when you do some kind of framework you put out there and for that framework any kind of codification is required is auto generated by the programming language so programming language itself generates the codes you don't have to write the code for yourself now these programming structures are divided in a various part procedural modular structural and object oriented programming and this concept of writing the programming structure is known as paradigm of the programming and this definition of paradigm is organizing principle of program it is an approach to programming what exactly type of approach you do to the programming these are the approach one is procedural programming one is modular programming one is structural programming another is object oriented programming a program in a procedural language is a list of instruction where each statement tells the computer to do something that means it is asking computer to do something in each statement like cobol and all they used to do this kind of things even in c cobol basic you have to write each part separately here emphasizes on doing the things the process not on data so data is were insecure over here then come to the programming in a extension of procedural language big programs are divided into smaller parts are known as module each part is divided in a modules and now when you look at these modules they are the part of the programs they are the functions but here also mainly the programming is distributed in a different parts but again the data is not given the importance finally we come to the object oriented programming object oriented programming always give the emphasis on data so that the data can be secured so when the data is secured you have to understand this one very carefully when your data is secured then any kind of procedures will not affect your data object oriented programming represented by object which is an entity that can store data and has its interface through function to manipulate this data you have a separate functions and those functions are having a limited access with the help as your data is having a specific access specifier like private public protected and package so data cannot be manipulated so easily so they are much more secure class is a template or blueprint that means in the object oriented programming there are two parts are there one is class another is object we will discuss about this in the next page first let us know that class is a template or blueprint it's a concept of anything that is created using the class and when you implement that concept that is called object so object means it's a real time entity the thing which is real time entity let's look into the things again what is object oriented programming 
object oriented programming is a programming paradigm based on concept of objects which can contain data in the form of fields and code in the form of procedures where data can stay secured with different access specifiers. Now if you look at the things object oriented programming it is very much depends on data field and then it depends on code of procedure. Now when you look at this data they are each one is secured with the different type of access specification. This access specifications what are they? Private, public, protected and procedure. Now they are called package sorry package. What are the four core concept of object oriented programming? If you look at the four concept, concept one is a abstraction, concept two is a encapsulation, concept three is a inheritance and concept four is a polymorphism. When you look at the encapsulation, through the encapsulation we create the class and from the class we abstract, we create the real time entity that is called object and through the object you abstract other parts, the functions and other procedures and all. Similarly, abstraction is what? Abstraction refers to the act of representing essential features without including the background details or explanation. That means it is a kind of data hiding. Now when you, how the data is coming, how the data is manipulated, you don't have to bother. Like when you create a electrification at your home, you just switch on the switch. How the circuit being made, how the connection is made, you don't have to bother about anything. You just make it switch it on and switch it off. All the data is hidden behind the switches. That is what exactly kind of an abstraction you are taking of the background details without including, without knowing how it is working. Next one is encapsulation. Encapsulation means the wrapping up of data and operations or functions into a single unit. All the different types of data like uh, your name, your bank account, your other details, address and all these are the data. And then to manage this data you want to you think about a banking procedure where you have to create your bank account and when you create your bank account all the details you give apart from that you give the money and those all things create the data and these data is been created with the help of a function or a constructor mainly it is created with the help of a constructor or function and then other functions like withdraw functions, deposit functions and all other different calculation functions and all are there. So they actually manipulate the data which you have in your bank. That is what exactly I have shown over here. You can see class AVC and inside the AVC all your data are there, functions are there and when you look out those data functions they have been wrapped with the help of this curly braces. Now this curly braces creates a what? A single unit and that unit is called ABC. Now apart from this we look at the next one. One is inheritance. What is inheritance? It is the capability of one class of thing to inherit capabilities or properties from another class. Basically, if you look at the some class you have created where you have a basic properties you have defined and then you have created the subclass of that. From that base class, from that class, if you create another class, all the properties which are protected and public, they can be inherited to your subclass, except the private properties. Like, if you look at your, if I give you a simple examples, your father is a doctor 
and he is having lots of money and he is having a car now if you look at this simple concept over here you will find that your father's degree is a private his having lots of money and he is having a car now as a child what you can inherit can you inherit his degree no you cannot inherit his degree so if you look at yourself you are the subclass and your father is the best class automatically what are the properties of the fathers can be inherited in you is are car and money but his degree cannot be inherited you have to earn it so we can think that this is how the things which are written in a particular class in the base class those properties which are specified in the part of protected or public can be inherited in the subclass the base class is the upper class a super class from which another class inherit properties inheriting class called subclass or derived class next property is what polymorphism it is the ability for a message or data to be passed in more than one form like area that word area means area of anything anything means it may be a circle shape it may be a rectangular shape it may be a square shape it may be a rhombus or anything now to find out that area you have a different kind of functions but what you are going to find out is area now when you want to call the functions area functions then inside a class called shape you can write different types of area functions and those functions names will be given the same name area but over there the inputs are different when you give the different types of input these programming system is so intelligent it can easily identify which type of area you are looking for and this is how it calculates the area of particular type of shape and this is a example of polymorphism and when you look at this whole things we are basically depend on two things one is a class as i told you a template or blueprint representing a group of objects that share same properties and relationship like if you think about a human human is what human is a concept which are having some of the common properties everybody knows these properties if anything anybody is having that is a human now when you look at that concept that is your class but when you look at ravi anup sulakna or any other name any other person whom you know that person is a human being and that human being is a real time entity of our concept class so what exactly it is the object so each one of us are the object of the class human being now what are the advantages of oops object oriented programming the first object uh, advantage is reuse of code encapsulation allows class definitions to be reused in other application and share code to different application as i told you in the inheritance properties over there you can inherit as well as you if you declare a class as a public that class can be accessed by the another programming programmer sitting in another part of the world and if you share your code they can use the same code for different purpose and they don't have to write the same code again and again this is how we can reduce the uh, time reduce the time for the research reduce the time for the development of different things ease of comprehension comprehension is what op concept are more near to the real world modules means when you write 
any programming using object oriented programming you are really to the real world to the things which are near to you <coughs> ease of fabrication and maintenance if you have to make any kind of change in your program you don't have to look for all the things what you can do you can easily change a program in codes in a specific part of it is it redesigning an extension ease of fabrication means the concept of encapsulation data abstraction allowed to clean designing of the program you don't have you reduce the complexity of your programming in your you can reduce the complexity of the programming using the java thank you thank you for the part one